There are two ways to change most of the settings we're going to look at from here on. Either make the changes on the LCD screen, like we did at the end of the previous lecture, by pressing the Q button or Set button once on your Canon, or the I button twice on your Nikon. You should now be able to move between various settings on your LCD screen. The other way of doing it is finding the shortcut button for the particular setting somewhere on the camera body. These differ greatly from one model to the other, but if you look carefully, you will find the right button. Try to familiarize yourself with these shortcuts so that you find them easily the next time. First, I'd like you to find the white balance button. It's usually shown as a small WB. If you can't find the shortcut on the camera body, use the LCD screen menu. Once you press the WB button, you'll see the different white balance options. Auto white balance, daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten or incandescent, fluorescent, flash and custom. Try taking a picture in each of these modes. As you can see, each of these settings will make your photo look slightly different. White balance doesn't influence the brightness of a photograph, but rather the temperature of it. In other words, the white balance determines how warm or orange or how cool or blue the image is. For instance, if it's an overcast day and your images are coming out a bit blue, select a cloudy white balance and the camera will warm the photos up slightly. Or, if your photos are looking a bit too warm on a bright clear day, select a sunny white balance and the camera will cool the photos down slightly. The one big danger with white balance is the fact that many people forget to change it once the light conditions change. In other words, if you're in cloudy white balance on a sunny day, your photographs will look orange. Or, if you're on sunny white balance on a cloudy day, your photographs will look completely blue. And for that reason, I always photograph in auto white balance, where the camera automatically chooses the white balance for you. If the photo then still looks too blue or too orange, of course you can change it manually. Just remember to take it back to auto white balance once you're done. The next setting you're looking for is metering mode and this may or may not have a shortcut button. If not, use the LCD screen menu. I'm not going to go into detail about metering mode because it really is an advanced camera setting and can be confusing at this stage. So all I'd like you to do is to select evaluative metering for Canon users or matrix metering for Nikon users. The camera will now read the light across the whole frame giving you the best chance of getting well exposed photographs. Now that you've chosen auto white balance, which automatically decides how cool or how warm your photograph should be, and matrix or evaluative metering, we can move on to the next setting, namely drive mode, which I discuss in the next lecture.